What do rhino poaching, mosquitoes and cancer all have in common? Well, believe it or not, they all have uses for cutting-edge nuclear technology. And South Africa is at the forefront of the research. Pelindaba in the northwest, once a place where weapons of mass destruction were developed, is now the center of a program that's saving lives. Lorenza got a behind-the-scenes tour of this nuclear facility. When you hear the word nuclear, what comes to mind? Maybe it's the devastating legacy of atomic bombs or the controversy of nuclear power. But a team of local scientists thinks you should be looking at nuclear differently. We have cancer patients that are stage four that are going up, and that is just next to, to a miracle. Unlike uh, being in the past where nuclear medicine will, be, will have been the last resort, it's going to be one of the first resorts. I never thought this day I'll be standing here, fit. Fit and walking. Fit and walking, yes. The applications of using nuclear technology are incredibly broad, from anti-poaching to food security. And the magic is all made right here by South Africans finding solutions to our local problems. Roughly 10 million people die of cancer every year making it one of the greatest medical challenges facing humankind. The most advanced technologies in the world have been brought to bear on fighting cancer, from immunotherapy to gene editing. Now, nuclear research is delivering promising results, and South Africa is at the forefront. The Nuclear Medicine Research Infrastructure, or NUMERI project, was launched earlier this year, and it's here where the nuclear technology gets put into practice in the treatment of cancer patients. Uh, I was very sick. Then they brought me, I was on a wheelchair to this hospital. In January, Douglas Macheni was in the advanced stages of prostate cancer, untreatable by traditional methods. Was there a point before you started your treatment here where you thought that you were not going to live? I, I had already given up because I was 69 kgs my weight from 110. And I was as thin as a church mouse. Prostate cancer progression is measured through a blood test for levels of a marker called PSA. A normal PSA level is below four, but Douglas's levels were through the roof. He was knocking on death's door. How advanced was your cancer when you started your treatment here? Oh, well, it was very bad because my PSA was about 700. Douglas was selected for a clinical trial open only to patients with prostate cancer that are spread to their bones. Because they have extensive pain metastasis and sometimes near breaking their bones and those patients, when they come full time every day without painkiller, they, they cannot do anything and they stop working. Mm. Professor Mike Santeche is the CEO of Numerai and a world leading nuclear medicine specialist. After treating them, and in most of them, after one or two cycles, you, see, you really see excellent results with the patients who live with their pain, but also with the shrinkage of the lesions. This trial explores a revolutionary approach to imaging and treating cancer. Safari Research Director was actually a commission 18 March. 1965. It will turn 60 years next year. We are at Nexa, or the South African Nuclear Energy Corporation's reactor in Pelindaba, Northwest Province, called Safari One. Once a site for enriching the uranium for South Africa's nuclear weapons, now it's the key to unlocking the life-saving potential of that technology. Dr. Sami Malaka manages the Safari One research reactor. We are one of the best amongst the world that it's available. We strive to be available 300 days an, an annum. So it's quite a, a mean feat. We're doing research in, to solve societal problems using uh, nuclear technologies. Safari is really the heart of Nexa. This is um, our pride and joy. 
Leading the research at NAXA is radiochemist Professor Jan Rein Ziervaart. With over 100 international publications to his name, he's a leading figure in the field of nuclear science because we have a neutron factory on site, and we now make a lot of isotopes from that. These isotopes are used in industry, they're used in agriculture. Behind me is a dashboard providing live updates on how the reactor is operating. As you can see, all of the indicators are green, which tells us that Safari One is operating exactly as it should. It all starts with splitting an atom. Inside this massive tank is the core, about the size of a washing machine, containing uranium rods that fuel the nuclear reaction. But these researchers are looking for something often overlooked, radioactive isotopes, which simply put are radioactive atoms that, among other things, can target and destroy cancer cells. We place the material in the reactor, they become radioactive, and now we can do all sorts of things with them. Radioactive isotopes are a byproduct of a nuclear reaction. During that reaction, extra subatomic particles called neutrons are released. When another atom is placed inside the reactor, these neutrons fire into it, making it radioactive. Is there an element of danger to the research that you're doing? In short, there's no problem with the safety because we're using a small amount of radioactivity. South Africa exports these isotopes worldwide, generating significant revenue. We occupy just over 20% of isotopes for nuclear medicine. Our customers range from the US, UK, North America. And then that generates a revenue of approximately 1.6 billion to the country. The isotopes are brought from the reactor to the processing plant, where it's processed and put into this little container. From there, it goes to a bigger container, and it then gets shipped all around the world. It needs to reach its final destination within 72 hours. But many of the patients who benefit from these isotopes are much closer to home, less than an hour's drive away at Steve Pico Academic Hospital. Radioactive isotopes play a role in all the steps needed to combat cancer, including treatment. It starts here, where patients are scanned to locate the cancer. In many cases, a patient with suspected cancer would be sent to have a PET scan done. Now, that's where this shiny machine comes in. It's called a cyclotron, and in here, radioactive isotopes are produced. It gets put into a glucose solution, and the radioactive isotopes bind to the glucose molecules. It gets injected into the patient, and because cancer loves glucose, which is sugar essentially, the radioactive isotopes go directly to the cancer cells. And during the PET scan, you're able to get a very detailed image of where exactly the cancer is. This scan shows the extent of the cancer, which appears as orange in Douglas's body before treatment. The isotopes emit energy, which the machine uses to trace their location. So the very same uh, molecule that we use to diagnose, we'll then use it to treat, except we change the isotopes. In other words, a different isotope is now attached to the glucose molecule and injected. The second isotope targets the cancer with sniper-like precision. Radiation breaks down the DNA of the cancer cells, delivering a lethal blow to the tumors. After just two treatments, a new scan shows the cancer is almost gone. What is your PSA now? PS, my PSA now, the last time I checked, it was six. Six? Six. So you're a walking miracle. Exactly. This method reduces side effects and boosts effectiveness compared to traditional radiation. Each treatment cycle costs about 58,000 rand, with patients typically needing three to four cycles. Medical aids are already covering these costs. So how successful has the study been? Very, very successful. I mean, the overall survival varies uh, from uh, 15 uh, months to people staying for four, five years. That would have been thought they would be dead in three months mm -hmm. or so. About one in eight men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime, with many not receiving treatment until it's too late, often relying solely on traditional methods. It's all about diagnosing cancer and, and treating cancer at the moment, right? 
that is really the, the, the crux of it. Of course, we can also do other uh, diseases, cardiovascular, neurological, infectious diseases, but really the, the bulk of it is really cancer management. The Department of Science and Innovation invested 500 million rand in Numerai. This trial is just the start, with the next phase targeting breast cancer. Once seen as a force of destruction, nuclear technology has evolved into a powerful tool for tackling our greatest medical challenges. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access carte blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.